In this lesson, we explore the process of retopologizing a 3D model produced with photogrammetry software. Topology refers to the 3D characteristics of a model or mesh. Most photogrammetry software will create a very complex model with triangles making up the shapes. Squares or quads are a better way of representing these 3D shapes. The process of retopologizing that we'll explore will convert from triangles of a raw photogrammetry or 3D scan model to a quad model. There are many benefits to doing this. These include smaller file sizes, more organized texture maps, and faster render times. Our topology workflow will use Instant Meshes and Blender. Both are free and open source. First, we'll briefly discuss installing the Instant Meshes program. Then, since many 3D models produced with different photogrammetry software may not have correct scaling or orientation, we'll explore importing, transforming, and scaling a sample 3D model in Blender. Then we'll export this model for retopologizing in instant meshes before bringing it back into Blender to UV unwrap the new low poly model and then baking the new texture on that new model using color or image data from the original 3D scanned model. As always, links to location of the data are in the description, as well as downloads for the software. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. The first thing we'll do is install Instant Meshes. This lightweight program is available via the developer's GitHub page. Scroll down until you see the pre-compiled binaries, and then go ahead and select the one that's appropriate for your system. I'll be working with Microsoft Windows. This, of course, comes in a zip file, and when you open this, there'll be a single file to download here. So go ahead and copy it to your hard drive. I'm just putting it on my desktop for now. And this program is the only program, the only file you'll need to run Instant Meshes. You may get a message like this, Windows protected your PC. Go ahead and click More Info and then Run Anyway, and this will open up Instant Meshes. Next, go ahead and start up Blender, then select all by pressing A and then X to delete all the default. We'll want to go ahead and also set up our units. In this case, we'll use uh, Imperial and we'll ask it to separate units. And now finally, you'll go ahead and import the file. And of course, in this case, we're using uh, a 3D file that was produced with photogrammetry software. So we'll go to File, Import, and then navigate to our model and click on the OBJ and click Import OBJ. As we can see here, when we click on the file, it's not oriented quite right. And so what we'll need to do is use a combination of keys, hotkeys, and different transform and scale operations to get this oriented correctly. So I've gone ahead and gone into the front mode. You can see here front orthographic mode. And I'm just going to use rotate in a couple of these different modes to get this into the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and also drag it along two of these views into the, the center of the grid. So I'm just using one for front, three for side, and seven for top orthographic views. And then I'm just using the R key and the G key to rotate and grab it. I want to go ahead and right click and set the origin to the geometry so that when I rotate or grab this, it's actually centering the gizmo or the widget on the actual geometry. We can go ahead and press N to bring up the side menu here. And if you don't have items selected, choose it and then just press zero and tab to zero out the position. And this puts us more in the center of the 3D world. I'm going to keep using the R and G keys to sort of line this up so it's properly oriented up in space and so forth. So as I rotate around here, we can see that this is now a more accurate looking, at least orientation. We can press the Z key and choose material preview to see the actual texture as well. Now something else we need to do is properly scale this. So we're going to assume that this trough area here is about two feet wide. So let's go ahead and shift A to bring up the add menu, add a cube. And we can see here if we've got items selected that this cube is two feet by two feet by two feet. So that's good. We wanna go ahead and click on the well and scale this up until that trough matches. So front and the period key to sort of line this up. And I'm just eyeballing this. Obviously, if you wanted more accuracy here, you could include a scale bar in the world or the object that you're 3D scanning. 
And then you could use that scale bar and this cube to accurately scale and position this model. That's good for us, so I'm gonna click X with the cube selected to delete it. With the well selected, we need to press Control A, and we're going to apply all transforms. So what this has done is it's locked in the scale and the orientation or transform of this model. Let's save our file. And I'm simply going to call this Kingsley Well. And now we can go ahead and export this. So export this as an OBJ and it will open into the same directory. And you can see we already have a Kingsley Well object here. You could replace that. What I'm going to do is offer a slightly different naming protocol here. So I'm going to put to retopo. And then I know that this is going to be the model I use in instant meshes to create a new topology for this model. One thing we want to do before opening the exported model in instant meshes is go ahead and click the overlays drop down and choose statistics. And if we make sure that the well is selected, we can see here that we have about 45,000 almost 46,000 faces. Once we've opened instant meshes, click open mesh, and then you'll need to navigate to where you just exported the new OBJ file. Go ahead and click on that exported file and select open. If we use our left mouse button, we can see that we can uh, rotate around this view. Middle mouse button will scroll in and out to zoom. Right mouse button is to pan left and right. So one of the first things we want to do is click the solve button and we can see all of these sorts of lines and these lines are going to be the guides for the quads that instant meshes automatically generates for us. But we want to go ahead and also ramp up the target vertex count. So let's take it to around 5,000. We don't have a lot of specificity here, but that's okay. 5.43 thousand. Keep in mind this is moving from 48 thousand or so faces closer to five and a half thousand. Reclick the solve button and we can see this is going to create some odd quads if we went ahead and clicked the solve field. You can see these are sort of bent, but we can go ahead and have instant meshes clean this up a little bit for us as well. So click on the orientation cone what we're going to do is just drag some straight lines in various places across our model and this is going to help orient our lines into a more classic type of grid so go ahead and drag these in various points try to get the the lines going up and down as much as possible that's probably pretty good so let's go ahead and click solve under position field and we can see now that we've got our quads lined up better to the geometry. We're ready to export this so we can click extract mesh and now we can see a very blocky version of this. Keep in mind that if I reset the target vertex count all of the changes I've already made will also change. But this is going to be good for our purposes so let's go ahead and click save and we're going to give it a name Kingsley Well Low Poly dot ob obj and click save and we can see this here our low poly obj file so that's our 3d object we just created is 608 kilobytes compared to our original which was 4.8 kilobytes okay now we're ready to import the model we just created so we're going to select import obj and we're going to select that kingsley well low poly obj file click import obj and now you can see this has created sort of a weird view for us in blender we can get rid of this and what's actually happened is we just have two models occupying the same space and overlapping so turn off the original kingsley well and now we can see the file we just created. Click on it to make sure it's selected or outlined in orange. What we need to do is actually make some adjustments to the edges of this new model. So Instant Meshes exports models and it's assigned values to these edges. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but we need to go ahead and clear out these automatically assigned values. So press Control E and choose Clear Scene. Control E again and Clear Sharp. Now if we press tab to exit the edit mode and we right click and choose shade flat, we can see the quads making this up pretty clearly, particularly if we go into wireframe of course. But if we stay in solid view and then right click shade smooth, we can see that this looks a little bit more organic, a little bit more like a real world object. 
So what we want to go ahead and do now also is clean up this model a little bit. You don't actually have to do this, but I like doing it because it produces just a neater looking model. I'm going to go in the top view here by pressing 7. I'm going to go ahead and start removing some of these grids. So I'm using face select mode, which you can activate by pressing 3 above the keypad or choosing the face select mode up here. And I'm just going to press X and choose faces and just select these and make the edges of the model a little less jagged. Now a trick here is if you select one face and hold down the control key while selecting another one, you'll select all the faces in between it. Press X and we can get rid of those. And here I don't want to keep deleting all of these lines. Instead I'm going to press 2 to enter edge select. I'm going to choose a couple edges and then press F to join them. Go ahead and keep selecting and deleting faces. So you can see here we're going to have some curves to this and that's fine but obviously we could avoid that by spending a little bit more time in instant meshes to clean up those comb lines. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make uh, it'll be a little squiggly here but I'm just going to go ahead and join more of these faces together up here and then we'll be ready to move on. So that looks pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some seams and these seams are going to be used by Blender to automatically unwrap our model. So let's go ahead and go into vertex selection. I'll press one or you could choose it up here as well. And we're going to use the, the right click on your mouse to select it and then control select and we're just going to sort of follow some of the major geometry around this model. And I'm just going to use a combination of shift and click and control click to follow this line of vertices around the model. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. What we're trying to do here is just get sort of a general idea or a general line that in this case separates the ground from the vertical walls of the well. We want to then go ahead and press Control E and choose Mark Seam. So if we click off the model we can see that these edges have been marked in red. And we could go ahead and add some geometry if we wanted to. For instance I could choose this vertex and then choose another one and press the J key to connect them. I could also use the K key to start my knife tool and then click between two vertices and then press the enter key and we're just adding. So we could instead of taking this line, we could in fact clear this seam. We can also go into edge select mode, do this a little faster. Let's go ahead and go back into vertex selection and click between these two and we can see we've got a little bit better selection here. Okay, so now what we wanna do is continue doing this around the model and selecting other lines that basically offset areas kind of around a 90 degree. So between planes, right? Between the ground and the walls, between various walls and corners, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna speed up this part of the video a little bit and just move through this pretty quickly. Next, go ahead and drag out a second window in the Blender interface, and we're going to choose UV Editor. And so now when we re-enter edit mode, if we left it, press A to select everything. We can get the menu out of our way. U to get the unwrapping menu, UV unwrapping, and then we can click unwrap. And it will use all of those red lines 
or scenes we marked to create a UV map. We can see we have a few errors here. So we can go ahead and go into Vertex Select. We can use the UV Sync selection. So when I click a Vertex here, it'll show it in the main window as well. What we can see here is we have some non-uniform planes. So let's go ahead and shift back into the edit mode, face select mode, press X to delete this and get rid of this face. But I think if we take this point and this point and press the M key, which brings up merge and we choose at last, we can actually close this in and make this look pretty, pretty good. Press A, U and unwrap again. And we can see we've actually now corrected that issue. So now we're ready to create a new texture that will bake the old texture in for this model. So press the tab key to exit edit mode. We need another window here. So drag this out using the interface and choose shader editor. Press N to get rid of that side menu. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new texture. So new, let's call this Kingsley Well low poly now also we need a new texture map for it so let's create a new image we're going to call this kingsley well low poly let's change the width and height to 2048 and then press ok so use the mouse wheel to scroll out and now we want to go ahead and save this image. So you can go ahead and save it into your working directory. You can see it's already got the name we just assigned to it. So press save as image. And then back here in the shader editor, we're going to attach that newly created empty image to this principled BSDF shader. Press shift A, choose search, type in image texture, press enter, drag and click to attach this. We can drag out the node from color to base color and then open. And this should automatically bring us into the same directory. So we'll choose that low poly texture image map we just produced, click open image. And we can test to see if this worked by pressing Z and material preview. And there it is, it's, it's nice and black. It's shiny because we don't have everything set the way we want it. We probably want the roughness all the way up. We can leave specular it. 0.5 for now, sheen can go down, and that's pretty good for now. We can turn on that original model, turn this one off. We're going to take the image data or the texture data from this high poly model, and we're going to copy it or bake it to the low poly model we just selected. But first we have to change our renderer to cycles, and then we have to change our bake settings. And here you can see bake has been highlighted. So bake type, we want to set to diffuse. We want to deselect the direct and indirect blue button. We want to choose or tick the selected to active button and then expand this. We want to click or select cage and we want to enter for ray distance 0.1. We also want to uncheck clear image. And so now what we need to do, and this is important to follow the order here, you need to select the original high poly model, in this case that's Kingsley Well, while holding down the shift key, select the Kingsley Well low poly model as well. And so these are both selected and you can see they're different shades of orange and red to show you that you selected both of these models. Now we're ready to click the bake button. And as you can see, this is working down here in the bottom. You may get an error message, we can ignore that. Once baking has finished, you can see this Kingsley Well low poly texture map has been updated. So we want to go ahead and save as, and we're just going to save it as the same name. And what this means now is if we turn off the original high poly well, we can see that we have now textured our low poly well. And what we'll need to do here, we can see there's some artifacts on the baking. So we'll want to mess around with the max ray distance here. So in this case, the settings that work here is I changed uh, cage extrusion to one inch and max ray distance to 10 inches. So that's it. As always, links to location of data are in the description. Please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates.